All right, welcome back everyone. I must say I'm having a really good time sharing my passion and uh, a little of my knowledge, if you can call it that, with you. So welcome back to step two. Um, we left off with the chest plate um, paint chipped, as in step one. And off camera, I took some time to do the rest of the figure for uh, the, the, at least step one, you know, the paint chipping. So let me just cut out the video here to show you uh, the before and after in a still and then compare that to uh, an actual screen cap to see how far we've come and how far we must go. And after that I can uh, take you to uh, step two which is dry brushing and the weathering powder I announced in the, the first video. All right, so step two, dry brushing. This is one of the coolest techniques I ever learned because that's another entry level thing, doesn't require a lot of money, but it can get some great results. Dry brushing requires that same favorite brush of mine. Uh, this is uh, a pretty small uh, square brush and I cut it even shorter so the bristles are really tough thick and have some resistance, okay? And this works both for the scraping effect in the battle damage that I showed you in video one. It also works great for dry brushing. Dry brushing is nothing other than dipping your brush into the paint. Then, as you can see, I've been doing it uh, already, taking most of it off. So, the brush is mostly dry, hence the name. See? And then I'm going to try and see if it's going to be visible on this piece. This is the bonus piece that came with the QS006 quarter scale Mark 45 from Hot Toys. Nice piece of plastic that looks pretty metally already. Now you could be doing some regular paint shipping, but this is the kind of piece where I would like to do some dry brushing. And as you can see, I still have a bit too much on the brush, so I'm going to dip it in. And the beauty of this paint is, as you can see, I can take it off with my finger or with a Q-tip. Uh, until it's dry, it's pretty easy to remove. So, uh, one of the reasons I like the Vendatio paints. And as you can see, just by brushing the edges, because this is such a hard brush and because there's very little on the brush, what you get is only the raised parts are going to pick up the paint, which gives a really interesting, cool effect where you get the darker basic shade that this came in and you add the silver to the edges, which to the eye is going to really look like actual metal like there's actual metal underneath the darker paint and it's it's a very subliminal thing that not only makes the details pop out a little bit more but um, also communicates to the brain that they're looking at metal when in fact they're just looking at a piece of well this is I don't know it's not plastic but when I'm done with it it looks the way I want it to now, let's see if I can't make this a little bit more dramatic for you. So, I'm getting my black paint here. And I just realized I should have done a before picture. Um, we'll do that on the other thing. So, let's see if you can't pick up on this bit of wire here. Now, this is something that I would normally like to see in a different color anyway, given that not everything on here is supposed to be metal. This is supposed to be some black wire, so making that black. Another thing that uh, what, what, what happens here is that 
um, the black paint dries up semi matte so like a satin type finish having different finishes in one piece that is actually the same material again tricks the brain into thinking it is looking at separate separate pieces so this is another thing I really like to do pick out some strategic pieces like these well I think they're wires anyway and just make them black because hey most wires are so these are all the tricks that many people who like my work probably subliminally pick up thinking there's more going on than there actually is um, and so I also like using matte varnishes on certain types to uh, type of stuff again to suggest different materials uh, when it's all one piece whether I'm painting a poly polystone statue or something like this it really gives it a little bit more reality and, and detail now let's see if you can't pick that up but um, off camera I'll be doing a little bit more showing you the results and doing some more dry brushing on other parts um, to show you what is possible in a piece like this all right so I've made these wires black I'll be doing a little bit more off camera later to heighten the effect the problem is the camera is showing all kinds of dark colors but it's not showing up like I'm looking at here so I'm going to try and fix that later so dry brushing uh, works great with silver but it also works great with blacks or sand colors like uh, khaki or uh, actual sand colors uh, I actually use a lot of that uh, a lot of that stuff um, I'll be showing you some later but uh, here is the uh, Vallejo khaki color I use number uh, 72.761 the khaki color is another good one um, the matte varnish which I'm almost out of I can see uh, 62.062 now I'm not getting any money from Vallejo but I'm just really excited about their stuff it's very forgiving uh, very easy to work with so uh, show you how black can work because again to make the details pop give the eye contrast that's the way it focuses and that's what the eye is drawn to um, and the contrast can be in terms of light versus dark or bright colors or anything but we're not looking for too many bright colors in this thing and um, and so again dipping it in black almost most of it out of the brush and doing some black now this is too took too much off because guess what uh, as you might be able to see here you also need dark colors like this to get that powder burn effect that's something you can do with dry brushing too so we'll add a little bit more black as you can see we're going through huge amounts of this not um, and since our figure is now battle damaged let's see what's underneath and that's quite clean so let's do some dry brushing on that again most of it should remain on the tissue whatever you use and that's just do that and the beauty of this is if you then take that same clean side of your tissue and clean off the raised edges which is exactly the reverse you want with the uh, of what you want with the um, with the silver you want the raised edges to be hit in this case we want some dark stuff to get into the creases because guess what that's where the dirt usually stays because it doesn't clean off so 
This stuff doesn't dry and grab on too fast, so you have time to work. Put it on, brush off for the, the raised edges, and slowly create a little bit more contrast here. All right, so now we get our weathering powder. We get our Q-tip, and we go into the soot in this case. And again, for the deeper lying areas, just work that in there. And if you're too afraid to try airbrushing, this thing really works um, as a pretty good second best um, to create like powder burns or, or what have you, you know. Um, so if you look at the bicep area, I can use the dark powder to get almost these, yeah, well, gun scorching type burns on uh, certain areas. As a general rule, on the darker colors and think of it uh, for, I don't know if you guys, rem if all, all of you is remember the copying machine, but uh, if you were to copy something red, it would turn out black, right? So in this case, uh, red would count as a dark color. Um, so focus on the light type of um, paint chipping and all that there. And as you can see, Hot Toys did the same. So on the gold, you will see dark smudges and all that. So. That's where your black comes in. Now, another great place to use this is any type of uh, exhaust on the figure. So, more on the brush. Let's see if I can focus on that. Uh -huh. Here we go. So the exhaust here should have some of that dark burn, right? See if that shows up. And you can go subtle or you can go all the way. This is something I would usually do with an airbrush. But um, as you can see, uh, I've made the first steps here. So here we go. Here as well. Um, it takes more time to with this uh, type of powder on uh, on the exhausts so I will be doing an airbrushing step as well and that's going to show you uh, a more efficient way to do to deal with these exhausts um, but uh, right up here in the corner around some paint chipping it's nice to get some powder burn around that area that really gives it more credibility and a little bit more pop again contrast is the name of the game so, um, yeah, this is a, a very low entry way of doing weathering. And as you can see, there are some faint results. Let's see if I can show you some more around the chest reactor. Some more. Let's see, just subtle accents. Like I said, this is something that's easier done with an airbrush for a reason. Another great place, get a new one. You go through quite a bit of these uh, during the course of one figure, but like these deep crevices, see how that turns nice and dark, get some shading going. Get some more, uh, you see that, that's nice, those little burns. All right, looking at this base, it's fine. Um, normally I might be inclined to leave it just the way it is, but um, since it's a good candidate for dry brushing and especially showing what dry brushing can do, I'm going to be using it as an example. You should be careful, I'll set an example, I'll make an example out of you. So, I want to get as much black as I can into the deep parts of this rock. Make my life easier by taking much of it off. 
before it dries. Like that. And uh, get my second brush to do some of that sand we talked about. All right, so second brush with the khaki color, the sand color. Again, take most of it off and then start brushing it on the rock. The raised edges will get that color, whereas the deeper lying edges are still the dark stuff. And uh, that way you get a little bit more pop. Like I said, the rock was fine, but uh, it's just a means to an end to show you what's, uh, what's possible here. So uh, maybe it's a bit much. This is another issue I have with these bases. It's subtle, but uh, while we're at it, let's just take a look at that. Get a new of the dental applicators, I think. I, I can't remember the name. As you look at the sand that's on this, it's um, glossy sand. Now, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, sand is not glossy until so something really weird happens to it. So, this is, again, on something bigger, a great candidate to work on with our matte varnish. So, get the matte varnish. And on the areas where you see the sand, subtly apply the matte varnish so that it's no longer shiny sand, but looks much more realistic. Now, if we zoom in to this piece of rock, you might remember we put the black in the crevices and took most of that out and then started dry brushing. And as you can see, the beautiful sand color is only in the raised areas. Focus on the rock, yeah. And um, yeah, that gives a nice and quite realistic look to this rock. Um, going back to the powders, let me zoom out for you again. This is great stuff to use on these surfaces. So, a little bit of mud, streaking. Let's see if that shows up. See how that makes it pop? Uh, Smoothing that out, right there, on here as well, let's see, right there, can you see? Let's see if that shows up on camera. It's, it's just one of those useful tools to get the raised edges and make a little bit of that detail pop some more. Like I said, this this thing was fine the way it was, but it is nice to be able to show you guys what the different techniques can do. All right, so even spending a little time with this piece has already made it look so much better. I um, I like going over certain parts and just making them entirely of the light silver color so there's more to look at, more detail, more variation. This wire is now black as you can see or can't see. Let's see. These twisted wires are now red and black like you would expect wires to be red and black instead of uh, all everything one piece of uh, silver. So. Again, it was a fine piece the way it was, but uh, while I'm in the process of showing you guys some stuff, I thought this might be a nice example. So, in this final shot, when you compare the, um, the weapon on the front that has been worked over to this part in the back, which hardly got any attention at all, 
you can already see the difference there. And uh, to my eyes, at least, this one looks more interesting and vivid. All right. Now, focusing on the back of the figure, this is where some semi-dry brushing is really helpful. Uh, I usually uh, go a bit faster in the back because that's the part where I don't really <laughs> look a lot at the figure. So, as you can see, just a little bit of paint on the brush and taking that back a little bit. You get beautiful scrape effects in larger square areas by using the big brush with very little on it. So, let's see how this works. And it's really something you have to judge by my eye. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of taste, you know, but uh, to me it has to match the front and it has to be where I would expect it to be, which usually is around the corners. This is where the surface tension is greatest, so that's the place where paint always chips. And again, I like using that to show all these edges and details and ridges in a figure anyway, so when I get to the point where my brush doesn't give off as much anymore, then I can use it for areas like this. Let's see if I can do that in one smooth motion. Well, not smooth, but it's one motion. Uh, with a lot of raised area and just get those raised ridges a little bit of silver. It helps when you have parts that extend out so you can work on them then place them back and you get these beautiful effects around the ridges where you expect them to be again. So here you're holding your uh, your brush flat so it only hit, hits certain areas taken back what you don't like and well pretty good all right final touches for this phase like I said you need some dark effects on the lighter areas again with a brush that is barely wet just get some damage going on that, as you can see. But then, uh, yeah, for this step two, I'm quite happy with, uh, with the way this looks. Also, when looking at our base, the figure, the accessory that got some attention. I'm really liking the way these wires now look much more like actual wires. You can still see where we use the powder to get some more detail out of the sand and it still shows quite a substantial difference between this part that has been worked on and this part that almost hasn't. So, going back for part three, we'll be doing some real damage, quite literally. Bullet holes, scrapes and scratches. Hold on to your seats and thanks for watching.